You called me rapscallion. And the terms seem to fit. Rapscallions know that trees have a language. Together they plan to paint the landscape in autumn. They run across the landscape with everything in their paint pots, burgundies, yellows, greens, and reds. The spruce and the pine stay green all year round and contrast their greenness to the whiteness of the landscape, making folks realize that all is not dead. It's a shivery sight to see a tree on the landscape as naked as boys are when they dive in Otter Creek in the summertime. It's a blessing, though, that their leaves don't have to be buried in the ground like folks are. Rapscallions gather them up and pack them around the baseboards of houses to keep the folks inside warm while the cold winds blow. Although they weren't your favorite time of the year, Grandfather, vacations were the times I liked the best. I do remember, though, that you called me out to the wheelbarrow in the swing where we used to talk. And you said, Now, Paul, there isn't anything around the place here that I can't do myself this summer. But what I want you to do is to study a bit of each vacation day, and now's as good a time to begin as any. The thirst for knowledge is a New England characteristic. Well, it was an embarrassment when I was expelled from Princeton because I didn't take your advice so well and I spent too much time having a good time. But as usual, Grandfather, you came through and helped me get reinstated and finish that project. Well, not only did I learn from books, but I learned from the great out of doors as well. I did give myself five years of folly in which I spent some time riding on cattle boats, spending time on the ranches in Montana, traveling to London. Then I hung out my shingle, and I learned more, I think, the first time I climbed our white rocks than I did the first time I climbed the Pikes Peak in the Rocky Mountains. I'll always remember that unsurpassed view from our cliffs into the valleys of my Vermont. And I'll always remember those afternoons when the boys would gather at the old swimming hole and we'd strip off all our clothes in full of view of all passers-by hoping we could shock somebody. I remember when my father would come home. And though he was never good at making a living, he was a happy man. He would gather us around the family piano on a Sunday afternoon and we'd all play our instruments and sing. He was never a knocker. He had as many friends as anybody I have ever known of every political and religious background, except, of course, you, grandfather, from whom both he and I inherited tolerance. It grieved you that ours was a broken home and my mother had to teach piano to make a living while you and grandmother took care of me and the others. I can remember so many times coming into the room and finding you in your rocking chair weeping. And I'd climb up on your lap and put my head on your shoulder and you'd be happy again. Many children have the opportunity of the examples and teaching of their parents. Not as many have the opportunity for the teaching and examples of their grandparents as well. I consider myself doubly blessed. Had I not lived in the home of my parents some of the time, I could never have appreciated the orderly home of my grandparents. I lived a long time considering the time in which I lived, 21 years short of a century, 79 and going strong. I thank God for my share of Horatio Alger, Pluck, 
and luck. I endured three wars. I even saw the advent of penicillin. I had enough energy to light up a ball field. Jenny used to say, Paul, you haven't time to die. There's too much to do. Well, when I died, Rotary didn't die. The young sapling that we had planted had become a great organization with clubs in 75 countries, over 300,000 men in 3,000 clubs of the world. Well, isn't it a wonderful thing at this moment to realize that Rotary is in 182, 83, and expanding countries of the world? Over 500 districts, more than 26,000 clubs in which there are over a million and a half men and women. There are Interact clubs developing throughout the world. Rotaract clubs are doing more and more all the time. It's all so overwhelming and yes, yes, Jeannie, Rotary is dedicated to the elimination of polio throughout the world. Rotary is dedicated to teaching young people how to read. Rotary is dedicated to projects of peace throughout the earth. Rotary is dedicated to the preservation of the planet Earth. It's also overwhelming. And yes, yes, Jeannie, I remember we wanted children but the fact that we didn't have any wasn't the end of the world. It would only be disgraceful if Rotary didn't take all of the children of the world into its arms, protect them from disease, teach them to read, give them the energy of Teddy Roosevelt, perhaps. All of the children of the world are ours in Rotary. There's no other way. It is the very spiritual essence of our being, and Rotary will always have something to do. And, yes, Yes, Jeannie, it's me, Paul. Today, Rotarians throughout the world use their four-way test to monitor and guide their financial support and volunteer efforts. The four-way test asks, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? <laughs>